Welcome to Nucanic. Today here in Nucanic we have a 2020 Honda Civic. On this Honda Civic we have the 1.5 liter motor in it with the CVT transmission. We happen to have a, uh, an emblem showing up on our uh, instrument cluster. Uh, it's right up there. It's making some, uh, it's blinking at us in the drive function. There's for the D. Honda has a feature on this 2020 where you can hit the information icon and then be able to scroll to the information or if you do it when you first turn on the key, it goes through all this. And then we can um, hit enter on that little information icon. And now we can scroll over and potentially see which department of, or which module we are trying to look at. So this has, a, there's a transmission system problem. And that's where your uh, gear selector indicator is up there where it's blinking at us. So there's going to be some problem with the, uh, the transmission system. Scroll through here, we've got some other issues to be working on and we will get to those. But right now, the transmission one is our biggest concern. Uh, no check engine light on at this current second, but uh, this one is definitely a warning. So we have the uh, OBD2 scanner hooked up, the UCAN2, and so we are going to uh, investigate it by scanning it. Key on in the uh, on run position, vehicle not started, and then select the Honda. We're gonna do smart VIN. And then if, if you wanna make sure you can hit vehicle details and that actually brings up the vehicle details where it was made, your Civic and your VIN number. Now we're gonna select control modules because uh, we don't wanna scan the whole system. We're gonna check the engine module just to make sure that maybe there's, uh, if there's anything in there, even though the check engine light's not on. And we read the codes. Now everything that seems to be good in the engine module. Let's see what we have in the transmission module. Transmission module, we have a 56-4 uh, permanent DTC. And uh, the transmission fluid pressure sensor switch is, is what we're going to be looking for. This could cause uh, any type of amount of issues. And potentially saying it's not reading that there's any transmission fluid in the vehicle. So we will go locate this uh, sensor, go over the steps to be able to remove and replace it with a new one. So the sensor is located down right below your air box. So you want to unhook your uh, mass airflow sensor, undo the two bolts, uh, one number 10 millimeter there, one 10 millimeter right down here at the very front, and then loosen up your 5.5 millimeter bolt that holds the uh, air box to this little intake. So then once we do all that, then we'll be able to um, lift and pull out the whole air box. We have a little portion here that goes into a uh, bottom type air box, and this also holds on a rubber ground. So there may be a little bit of resistance as you, you go to pull it out. So down here, I um, mean air box removed, this is the sensor that we are looking for. And uh, here is the electric connector, so we're going to squeeze that. And of course you'll, you'll look to make sure that it's yeah, intact and hasn't been uh, um, damaged in any way there. Um, this, this clip has had some damage on it, but it's still making a good contact. So we squeeze it, pull it out. We've got three different little uh, tab options in there. And so we are going to go through the process to be able to replace said sensor. We are going to get a little bit of fluid that's going to leak out of there. Um, so it would be pretty good if you able to uh, pull it out and put it in, have your new one ready fairly quickly and to lose as less fluid as you can. So I have a 27 millimeter uh, wrench here. Um, doesn't seem like it fits it exactly perfect, but these aren't like generally super tight. They are good and snug, so it does work. So you're gonna spin this out. Like I said, there will be some fluid that comes out when you undo this. So here's your sensor. You have a crush washer, so you would get a new crush washer if you can, or make sure that you take this one off the old one and put on the new one if it doesn't come with that crush washer. So then you'll take your uh, sensor, and see all this does is it, it feels pressure from the fluid when the, uh, when the transmission is running. So we've, we've hand tightened that up at the moment. And we are going to wrench tighten it. And 
We want to make it good and snug, much like you do your oil plug. Just so that that crush washer gets crushed and makes that final seal. We are going into an aluminum body, and so we're not trying to really over crinkle. all that. And now you would just be able to go through the, the route of reconnecting your um, electrical connector. Go ahead and drop your air box back in. Connecting everything. Put the uh, two bolts back in there and uh, reconnect your mass airflow sensor. Now we will go into the vehicle and uh, clear out that BQC. So back in here with the uh, ignition on and uh, the key in the run position but not started. We still have our DCTE. Um, it's in here in the scanner on the dash so we can hit erase and clear it out. On the dash that information doesn't come up so potentially it is already reset. So let's just go ahead and back up and then we will go back into our transmission control. still in there. So we're going to go ahead and do the erase mode. Hit yes. Clearing the codes. Set, and we want, they're just confirming that this is what we want to do. Hit enter. Now it tells us to turn the key off. And now we turn the key back on. And the system has passed. There's no fault in there anymore. And so that was the replacement of that uh, pressure sensor and now you'll just go ahead and work and drive normal and make sure that that doesn't come back on for another reason you know there's always more than one thing that could potentially be wrong sensor or something internally that you may need to uh, take effect to work on thanks for watching mechanic where you can be the mechanic